You're listening to Real Estate for Real People, hosted by the Stone Sisters. The Stone Sisters have built an award-winning realty business, and they're here to share some of their knowledge with you. A new episode drops every Thursday. If you enjoy the show, please share it with a friend and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And visit www.stonesisters.com for more information just like this. Hi, welcome back to the podcast, Real Estate for Real People. We are so thrilled that you joined us here today. Um, and today we are really excited to have, I shouldn't have used excited again, should I have? <laughs> I just put it in your head. You Shannon's did. favorite words are thrilled and excited. And, and I love that. It, like, isn't that Shannon? Thrilled, excited, happy. <laughs> so it's, we anyway, could all learn from that. So I am very happy and very interested to hear from you. So we've yes. got James Rayburn from Associated Property Management here. And we're going to learn all about what people are seeing in rents, the changes that we've seen in the rental industry, Mm -hmm. what properties are the hot ones to buy as an investment property that you see from your perspective, and a whole lot more. So with that, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, I'm thrilled and excited to be here. Oh, so, thank you. Are you happy as well? I am <laughs> happy as well. Okay. See, good. Good. So, good. No, I do that appreciate the good. opportunity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, thank you. So yeah, I'm uh, Associated Property Management. I've been uh, in the rental uh, residential property management now for seven years. Yeah. I've been doing it out of the St. Paul office. And so uh, Associated Property Management's a brokerage. been around uh, 25 plus years in the market. Had um, its, really wow. well respected. Well really, respected. Yeah. Yeah. It does strata, rental property, and short-term rental as well. So we kind of cover all bases through the office and uh yeah so but i focused in on rental properties and and what that looked like for both investors i manage both individual residential properties or uh, apartment buildings so uh you know kind of have a market share over 440 tenants under that umbrella wow and uh, yeah it makes for busy but it also makes you you know, excited. educated and, and excited and thrilled <laughs> at times. So, yeah. So that's kind of my introduction and, and how I, you know, I got into the business. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it Associated was right there. So kind of went into it right away and awesome. you know, established Company. myself from there. So that's great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So perfect. Something so, I think a lot of people, if we can jump into yeah. it, are really curious about, myself included, yep. are the new changes. So the, mm-hmm. the BC government on fairly short notice yeah. um, made a change, a sweeping change across the province that it was no longer legal to to restrict rentals. Right. So it, yeah. You know. Yeah. So let's touch on that first of all. So that yeah. obviously was probably the biggest change and yeah. how that's going to affect. Uh, we had heard that was coming for some time, just wasn't sure when it was going to be implemented. Okay. I, I think the BC government had been looking at ways to try to expand the rental pool. Uh, their, what they were hearing from people in the market, in the industries, and mostly focused in Victoria, Vancouver, and Kelowna. You'll mm-hmm. hear that a lot. Um, how do you add more inventory to the market? And, right. and are these restrictions fair? So they did a big sweeping change. And so that's the biggest change they made. There's two that stood out for us in our business, which was the 55 plus restriction mm-hmm. and uh, the, the no rent or the no rental re- removal of the no rental restriction. Right. And those uh, existed in strata buildings, basically. And so stratas, occur, you know, across there's uh, over, I think there was over 400 stratas that we looked at or that it affected uh, wow. in the province. Uh, where now they have rental restrictions being lifted. Wow. So that's going to make a huge difference to the supply of rental units in the marketplace and overnight, really. Well, yeah. And so we actually looked at that. It actually, the way that we project it and the way that we see it. So for understanding that, so it's a grandfather clause. So if you're in a mm. strata right now that has had rental restrictions, yeah, they can't stop you or can't stop an investor from coming in and buying it and renting it out. But those restrictions won't change overnight because most people in those units and those stratas bought as permanent homes. So it will affect more of the next purchase or the uh, next person okay. who's buying it. Oh, I see. Okay. So, Got you. so the change is immediate, but that change that takes place in that building might take place over, you know, we, we actually think maybe two to three years before some of these change, some buildings will change faster than others, you right. know, high turnover buildings, high right. turnover condos. Mm-hmm. I think we have some of those here located in Kelowna. If we look at our downtown core, yeah. there's often ones that come up, you know, we can, you know, we can highlight a waterscapes, a discovery bay, something that's been established for some time that has a Allowed rentals, obviously, but right. some of the other ones that haven't down in the downtown core, well, yeah. that's lifted. So now when those come to market, are they going to have the same draw or appeal that a Discovery Bay has had or that a Waterscapes has had? Right. It'll so, be really interesting because we have a lot of out-of-town buyers yep. who find mm-hmm. us and, and make inquiries, whether they're in Ottawa or Calgary or Vancouver, and they yeah. say, okay, I'd like to buy something. I'll buy now while the prices are good. Or, you know, there's yep. a unit that appeals to me or what have you, but then I'm, I'm not going to move here for four years. Right. Can I rent yeah. it? And, yeah. and we'd get this and we'd say, you know, the vast majority of the building, buildings in Kelowna 
or bare yep. land strata, you know, yep. townhome developments or, or detached homes, they restrict rentals. So yep. it's, it's going to be really, really tough. And now that won't be the case. Yeah. So. And so I think that's where we see the positive to the market. Right. So when we look yeah. at rental only, really what we're looking at housing and one of the reasons why the government did it, their big, you know, shield, if you will, how to protect the marketplace was that rents were so high, there wasn't enough inventory. And the way right. to adjust that was to push this. So how it'll affect us on the, you know, on the operation side or in the residential side, and then U.S. selling is, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. So people now can look at an investment property. They're not going to see it in the strata bylaw that says you can't rent. Well, that will affect them, especially with our out of town investors or foreign yes. investors or people yeah. that aren't in the market yet, but wanted to buy, purchase and get a foothold in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So that inventory we expect to kind of hit the marketplace as, as it usually does, you know, your spring, right. late spring going yes. into summer. So that probably won't change, uh, you know, as right. far as the market and the timing, the expansion of the inventory might, because we might see more people deciding, Hey, I don't want to live in a rental only, or I, you know, or right. what have you take an approach or if you're a purchaser, you might say, Hey, I'm going to get into that market now because I know I can get it. I can get into that building. Yeah. I can get into downtown. I can run a rental for three years and I can move there or, right. or what have you, whatever right. the investor is looking yeah. to do. So I just want to back up a little bit yep. just to clarify. So if somebody lives in a property right now and mm -hmm. they've lived there for five years yep. and suddenly now with the new rules, they can rent that property out, but right. they can't actually rent it themselves if they've lived there all the time until they go to sell it. Or can they just tomorrow say, I'm moving out. No, as best we understand the interpretation is no, they can rent it out. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So that will be interesting because we may see some people as the market has shifted and as our prices have softened, we may start to see people who say, you know, I'm not going to sell for that low right. price. I don't have to sell. Mm -hmm. I can now rent. Yep. And and, and you move know, to something else. And hold I've, on to it. Which in effect is what the government wanted. Right. right. And that hasn't been like this has been fair like this has been fair like very new. So we yeah. haven't seen any challenges to this yet. And right. so I think you always allow these things to kind of settle in. I think we saw that when when they terminated short term rentals. And yes. that was supposed right. to be a, you know, that was in twenty eighteen and mm -hmm. that was again they dropped it right around that Christmas season. Yes. And uh so that was a big change. That was a huge shift uh yeah. for people that must right. move out clause didn't exist anymore. So how do you tell someone who is in an existing tenancy, they no longer can move a tenant out based on a fixed term that was automatically rolled into month to month. And how right. has that rolled out? Um, you know, it's interesting. There was actually something on one of the Facebook groups I followed this morning, I yep. think saying, you know, can anyone help us find a rental? We have to move out by the end of May because our landlords are going to Airbnb it for the summer. Right. And all these people responded and said, they can't do that. You're not, you can't be forced to move out anymore. And that would be correct. So a uh, fixed term still ends the tenancy, but the, the owner then has to oblige by the rules. So minimum of six months of occupying or direct family member occupying the home. Okay. Unless they have an end tenancy, right? If they, if they start that tenancy agreement and actually get them to sign an end of tenancy notice, does yep. that apply? And can they use that? It or is that ends the fishy? tenancy, but it is a gray and you can't really, and if so, if a tenant is found to have moved out under say misguided, you know, right. expectations or something that wasn't applicable by the, the, by the, by the laws in place, then no. And the tenant will have the rights both to the property and compensation. Wow, wow. So tricky. So if you really, like, cause we used to get that all the time of people yeah. saying, okay, I'm going to put a student in here from right. September mm -hmm. to yep. April. Mm -hmm. And if that student nowadays, if that yep. student wanted to stay, technically they could, or they could fight it anyway. Even they, if they've signed a mutual well, agreement to end tenancy? Well, they to, you know, they would have to move out. So if the tenancy is fixed term, they still have to move out as per the fixed term. It's what the property owner can do with the property within uh, those six months right, or a sorry, year. That's, you're no, right. Sorry, you're right. No, 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 no that's no. right. They okay. couldn't then rent it as an Airbnb. That's They'd right. have to have a family member move in. That's or, right. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. So, or do another fixed term another six fixed, month tenancy. Well, they would have to honor that tenant unless that tenant found other housing or there was a mutual mm. agreement to end. So we've, we, you know, mm. as we've progressed through that rule, we've yeah. found that, uh, so there was a, probably a period of time for about 12 months that that really kind of pushed our envelopes and trying to resort, ex especially expectations for of the course. owner, because yes. this changed under their, under their ownership of the property. Right? right. So once we kind of worked through that, I, we kind of started educating our owners and the people that we dealt with and said, Hey, look like, yeah, we can have a fixed term. We can always fix the term, but at the same time, you know, understand that it automatically rolls into a month to month. We would have that term within the tenancy and, and really it's educating an owner. And the right. time period is six months. So, because I know we've, we've got yep. clients, we have people who have purchased a property out by the university sure. and they rent it out from September yep. through to the end of April. That's right. And then they keep it for themselves. Yep. 
So although that's only May, June, July, August, that's four months. Yep. They would, they need to be at six months and the tenants have rights. So interesting. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it can be an expensive error oh, if yes. it's an yeah. error, or it can be an expensive mislead if it's done. So, you know, we always, uh, one of the ways that we try to empower our owners and, and, and ourselves so that we can act, you know, in the best interest of our, of our owners is a mutual agreement to end and, and make sure that the tenancy is ending on the right terms. We don't right. want to do something that's wrong. We don't want to be no. misleading tenants. So yeah. we want to give that information to the owner and the owner needs to decide what to best do with that property. So the best advice truly when somebody's looking at an investment property is hire a property manager yeah. and have, because otherwise there's Absolutely. with all these new rules and everything, you're yeah. best to do that. Yep. So at hire least, an expert. Yes, yeah. be, hire a property manager, mm-hmm. understand the rules. I mean, the rules are out there. There's interpretation in that. Yep. Um, so yeah, by all means, you can do your own investigation, but at least have a talk with a property manager, understand some of the, you know. Implications. Yeah, and- exactly. Just don't put yourself in a spot, right? No. Just yeah. make the best decision possible. And sometimes that's hard. Like I, I've had owners where mm-hmm. I've had to have that conversation especially in the transition period. So not as much in the last three years, but, yes. uh, and then we had the whole COVID bubble there for another time. Right. Oh yeah, so that was yes. another element all in itself when, when some of those restrictions were in place, but really, you know, you're just trying to act in the best interest, give them the best advice possible. Yeah. Um, I mean, the tenancy board is there for both tenants and landlords. Sometimes people forget that, that the information, yes. right. there's also landlord BC and there's also your uh, property manager. So there are great opportunities to Absolutely. educate yourself. And kind of come to a collective decision and say, okay, this is the best thing for the property. So, right. but as I said, uh, you know, over the transition over the last five years, we've kind of seen that kind of mitigate a little bit because the sense. expectation has changed and people understand, look, you know, you can do a fixed term, understand it rolls into a month, the month, you know, maybe you look for a different tenant, maybe a tenant's happy on a fixed term and right. know that they're moving out. Like a lot of the students are here, but then they leave, they go yes, back to Alberta right. or Ontario or Vancouver. So yeah. Well, and they don't want to pay the rent. I mean, it's interesting. Our our girls are going to school in Ontario and we pay rent for for 12 months of the year. The rent term starts in May and it goes until May the following year. Right. Kids aren't there. Yeah. You know, the house sits empty, but the, you know, there anyway, the landlord's collecting rent. Right. May, June, July, August when not a person sets foot in the building and you just think, oh, that's... That's a pretty good gig yeah. <laughs> yeah. as a it's landlord. For a know, landlord yeah. Does for that, investor. do you see that here? Not as much because no. there's been, and again, I think the market might shift and so allow for that. You know, we might see yeah. something mm-hmm. different in the next three years, Right. but really we've always seen this push and the need in the four year spring, summer demand. So there's always been right. two different marketplaces. Yes. We, we talk about this a lot. There's always been two different marketplaces in Kelowna. And that is you've got your winter season where it is quiet. It hits November and it is, it's, it's a great period. It's very quiet, lots, you know, low turnover, a lot of that student driven as well. People get housed between September and October. Yep. They're going to school, everything settles. And then we see January and then all of a sudden we see a shift and things kind of pick up in the rental market. So we've always had that summer market that's driven the ah. need for summer housing. Right. So, you know, if there's a grid agreement in place and the tenants are happy to mutually agree to end and the tenancy right. ends uh, and the landlord's able to, or there's, you know, or the have moved out and they have access to the property, then they can get into a spring, you summer can, Yeah, rental. and you can see the benefits from both points of view. Yeah, for, yeah. for a tenant, they don't have to pay that Right. X amount, right. thousand exactly. dollars a month, you know, and, for those months they're not here. And then the landlord's able to. And volume of housing. So we talked about inventory and how the rules were changed to kind of address inventory or, yeah. you know, prospectively address that inventory. And so, but their inventory has always been uh, strong mm-hmm. because the amount yes. of things, uh, rental markets hitting, and we're talking specifically for condos. I think right. I yeah. need to specify yep. that because you know, a single family residence or a townhome takes on its own kind of, it it has its very much its own rental pool, but a condo be it one bedroom or two bedroom, be it roommates or single occupancy, that is demand is very high in August and September. Regardless of the rules. And what would you say rents are? Can can we jump to that? And and, in those, I'd love to know rents. I think our listeners would love to know rents for everything. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So how much time do you have? No, no, no. (laughs) no, it's great. It's a tricky question because oftentimes it's good. There's so many questions. There's variables to what your market rent is going to be. So one of the, I was always empowered with the statement that the market is the market, right? So if Mm -hmm. someone's willing to pay you know, $2,000 for a one bedroom condo, then the market's 2000. Right. We, we also have to try to peg these markets, right. And say, okay, this is what your projection is. So we like to give, you know, we're kind of, you know, lawyers in a way that way, right. Well, we'll give a big wide range and then we'll work on the details once we get in. So most of our condos right now are in, you know, say the average two bedroom, depending Mm -hmm. on location, Uh, obviously it's, if it has a lake view, it's going to 
drive mm-hmm. up the price. Yes. But you're looking at anywhere from 1800 to 2200 and for that's a two bedroom. for a two bedroom condo. And that's okay. kind of, you know, yeah, that's your market. That's kind of what you're going to look at. Right. You can have, uh, we always, it, we always look at it, uh, that if there's an opportunity to rent for more, we will, but there's a time frame, and you kind of build that strategy with your owner. So right. if it's a right. sheer investment property, they often come and say, Hey, the bank says I need to be able to rent it for this. Do you think we can do that? So you're going to have those conversations often, you know, leading up to the contract. Right. Um, they, but they, you also try to educate them and say what the market is. So if you're buying a two bedroom condo and you get a great deal and it's December, you might be on the market for eight weeks and you might be closer to 1800. Right. If okay. you buy it in the summer, you might spend 30,000 more or 40,000 more. And that's where yeah. yes. real estate, you, you guys do yeah. your, your job and, and they come in and then they say, okay, well, I need to get 23, 24. Well, the market might allow for that. Okay. Right. Okay. That's interesting. That so it is, is interesting. The rents are seasonal, just like the market is so right. to follow the market. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It does fluctuate. And I think that's where you can really, you know, as an investor kind of make your strategy. Right. So, uh, you know, allowing for that, maybe there's some rentals, maybe you can, you know, maybe right. you build that into your purchase. So you say, okay, I'm going to buy it in, you know, January, February, and yeah. I'm going to do a $30,000 renovation. I've saved my money in the market, you know, at the winter yes. season, but I'm planning to hit the market in spring and I'm going to give myself the best eight week run at the best peak. And right, I assume okay. just like when you're buying a property, when, yep. you know, when, when you're selling a property, you want it to look as good as it can of, to yeah, attract absolutely. the best buyer. Yep. And I'm sure as a, as a landlord looking to attract the best tenant, yep. it, if it smells good, if it's got fresh yep. paint, if uh, it's a hundred percent and there are different landlords and I respect all landlords in our business. We see all different varieties. So yes. some people have the capital, some people have inherited the property and right, needed to go can't. to market to cover for the estate or for the expenses, what have you. Uh, so they may be less inclined to spend that, but right. uh, uh, always, you know, it even says in the tenancy for, you know, the tenancy act four years is considered for paying a landlord must paint after four years right. or should paint or can't hold the tenant accountable. Yeah. So there are some of those guidelines, but yeah. a good landlord is going to have that plan and strategy going in. Right. A- and we, you know, I say good landlord, but you know, someone who's prepared and understands yeah. what the market yeah. might dictate. And so, wanting yeah. to make it an easy experience for them and their tenants, like which overall helps. Yeah, exactly. Overall. And again, you want the most amount of people to view your property with the best rate of return. Right. So it's, yeah, same as a house, like yeah, selling a house. It's exactly. The so they, they do market the same and that's, you got to allow for that. And I think if right. you can have that plan and I, and again, you, you talk to these owners and, and when they're getting into an investment property or they've acquired an investment property, sometimes you ask them those questions so that you can strategize what's best for them. Right. I get it. If you don't want to yeah. put 5,000 out for painting, un- totally understood. Yeah. But then we got to understand the marketplace. Right. Yeah. And where and, you sit. And affect that. Yeah. So what about rents for single family homes? So we talked about condos. Yep. Is, is there a huge demand for single family homes? Yeah. Kelowna, that's probably our least inventoried product mm. that we have in the rental pool. Right. And probably the highest in demand. Okay. And there's some reasons for that. So, and I, I'll caution that when I say highest in demand, it's probably the most pressing in demand. So it's, it gets the most intense amount of showings, people wanting to see it. Right. Whereas like a two bedroom condo might be, there's actually still good market share on a two bedroom condo. Mm-hmm. Right. You might, but you might run through less people, but there's still demand in that market. Place, right. But there's higher turnover. There's always higher turnover in a condo. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So they're shorter term. They could be six months for students. They could be 12 months, you know, for okay. a, a year to do their schooling or their work or, you know, something brought them to Cologne. They're not settling here. This is just really yeah. temporary housing. Single family is completely different. It's got its own market share and there just isn't enough single family homes. Wow. So we tend to see in that rate, even though the markets dropped somewhat over our winter season, that single family home has main, stayed in that main, you know, that 28 to 3,500 average for a three to four bedroom home. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And how does that drop if and that greater. same house has a suite in the basement? So that, does so it, it matter to have a house? Like what's yep. better to yeah. rent a whole house or to have rent a house with a suite? Let me, so, uh, property management, uh, you know, so, and this is a dangerous word. It is, it is hard or easier to rent a single family home as its own. Yeah. Right. You will have more demand. You will have a higher rate of tenants, meaning, you know, really mm-hmm. qualified tenants. Mm-hmm. They, you know, we've seen some very qualified tenants come through that are moving here from say Ontario. They haven't right. landed here yet. They don't know what they want. They want to set up for a year or two. These are doctors. These are lawyers. Yes. These yes. are, you know. Uh, they tend to have the income, so they'll they'll drive the rental, and that pool is so low, right? Right. So 
but they don't want a house with a suite. No, they don't want to share right. space. So again, I go back to the investor or the owner and say, okay, what are you looking? So if, if you're looking to get an up and a down rented and you understand there's going to be complications, there's often tenants frictions, right? Yes. You know, you put a family of three on an upstairs of a single family. That's great because that's what you're looking for. But the guy downstairs, uh, you know, he's in a, you know, yeah. a plumber electrician and he's a single and doesn't want to hear the right. kids running. You're right. going to have that. You have to prepare. And again, it goes back to educating your owner. And right. understanding what the tenancy might look like. So if you had a house, just throwing yep. it out there. So you had a, a house with three bedrooms up, so you could rent it to a family yep. upstairs with a one bedroom suite down. Yep. And what would the rent be for that with the suite versus yep. a house with four bedrooms, three bedrooms up, one bedroom down, but not a suite down there and you rent it to a whole family. So hmm. depending on location, but let's just say typically they can be comparable because yeah. you're going to say a three bedroom upstairs that if the entire house was going to market, it might be say 2,800 to 3,200. And I'm just, again, yep. average. Yeah, yeah. You might on the house side only get 1600 to 1800 for the upstairs and you might be in that thousand to 1200. Okay. So it's comparable. It really. can be comparable. Uh, I've seen like, if you look at, and obviously Kelowna has very different neighborhoods and sure. very sectioned, right? For sure. So when you look at your, your most sought after, you're looking at your Glenmore, your lower mission, that tends to be the highlight of the rental market. When you're looking at single family home, mm, they don't okay. want suites. Typically the people that yes. are paying the highest amount. So if yeah. you put yourself in their shoes, you can walk a mile and the tenant, she, you say, okay, you're a family of four. Yes. This is your in-between. It may not be your forever home, but it's, you're, you're moving to yeah. the marketplace or you're moving. Maybe you've sold your home and you're building. And so you've got two years. Do you want to share that property with someone? Mm -hmm. with right. your family. So it is a question that has to be asked and you invest that in the investor. Neither property is bad. They can be both be great investments. Absolutely. It just depends what the owner or the investor wants right. and what they're looking to get out of it. Exactly. So I have a pool of owners that absolutely love the up and the down and the option and, and, you know, but I have some owners and we've directed them to, Hey, if you've got the same, if it's dollar for dollar, you're an opportunity to buy a house, single family residence. Right. Probably do just as good on that return with less complications. Of course. And less turnover because yes. you can sign to, I mean, there's no end to a fixed term. So you could sign it if you've got a great deal in place mm -hmm. and you're happy and, mm -hmm. and you've done your, you know, your due diligence on the tenancy yeah. side, you can get a two year, three year lease in place that can be advisable. I mean, you may right. not advise it depending again on the, on the owner, right. but yeah, that's stability can mean a lot. Yes. And you're not turning over the basement suite three times in a year. Which I mean, so true. It's so true. The headaches so, of that. Cause yeah. we get asked that question a lot. Should yeah. we have rent buy a whole full house yeah. or yeah. a house with a suite? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and it's right. It's what headaches do you want? The turnover do you want? Right. And the rent might not make that much of a difference. Right. It might. Right. But and the turnover can be costly, right? Yes. So 100%. Sure. It, you know, again, it just depends who, who takes on the tenancy and what that looks like and your location. I mean, <laughs> business yes, is location it, too, right? Totally. So Always. For sure. I, th I think there's a marketplace where if you're investment dollar for dollar and you're looking for an up and a down, then there are markets and there are areas in the yeah. absolutely do that uh yes. it can make total sense and it can be dollar for dollar the same thing in a lower mission or an upper mission whatever yeah. you know glenmore wherever those desirables are when i speak of family neighborhoods right. um but again it comes down to what the investor wants out of their property and how much they want you know if you can buy a downtown up and a down you're yes. just going to run it for five years and have kind of a base operating cost in place that can work really well yeah. both up and down tenants will coexist i've i've seen it work really really well yes and i've seen it fail i'm so, sure yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it depends on the property you know 100 percent. and who and that always yep and the owner gonna be. and the owner, and the owner expectations owner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. makes sense what are inventory levels like right now like if, uh, if, if vacancy rate, we used to hear, I know it's a moving target and kind of yeah. impossible to say, yeah. but no. And I appreciate that. Vacancy rates always based on the government housing. So vacancy rates always going to be 1% or thereabouts because they're looking at what their inventory is. And so okay. it's very mm. tricky to apply that, you know, to the actual market. Yeah. So you kind of have to individualize it. Right. Okay. So I would say right now we have extremely low inventory in single family housing. That being said, we've seen a slight uptick because the market's cool. Right. So if we were doing this conversation in June or August, it might be different. But for right now, the snapshot that we look at inventory is still low or fairly low on single family. Uh, I think condos, two bedroom condos, one bedroom condos, micro suiting. I think we've seen an increase in that in the mm -hmm. marketplace. So that tends to be a little bit more, yeah, you know, I guess liquidated people are, there's still a lot of inventory right. or a higher well, inventory. Well, and there's a lot more coming. I mean, I've, I've been watching the city yeah. of Kelowna daily yep. summary and I'm looking at all the new buildings coming yes. to market, some of which are, you know, well underway under construction, yep. some which are just at the development permit yep. stage, but yeah, lots we're of- see a lot more supply coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. ex yeah, exactly. We actually, so we actually kind of looked in our office, we kind of project 2023 to kind of be a low inventory season for that, just because of the timing of some of these buildings coming online. 
we've had a real push in the marketplace for rental only builds too. So they're built yes. by, uh, you know, large corporations, companies, yes. REITs that are doing rental only. Yes. That was kind of, you know, we hadn't seen that for a long time. No. And that was kind of reintroduced in the market, probably 2019, 2020. And then through COVID, they kind of got built and, and then that inventory kind of increased. So you're looking at one, two bedroom condos or bachelors. That market tends to be pretty... You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say saturated at all, no. but there's a higher inventory in that. Right. And then your lowest inventory is your single family home and, and townhomes. Right. Uh, the, it's, it's very hit and miss with what's available. Right. And that tends to be the higher demand as far as, you know, that longer tenant, somebody who's going to be involved in right. the property For longer. Sure. Well, For the sure. Home, that makes sense. The home we're sitting in right now. So yep. this is a, a townhome. I mean, yep. it's mm. one quarter on a property. It's one of the, the RU7 properties. Okay. Yep. Um, three bedrooms upstairs. You've got a little den or a room right. here. There's a low, well, there's a crawl space, yep. like a great little kid's but area. It's a walking finished. crawl space. So yeah. five feet, you can walk in tiny little, like not tiny, but a yard that you've got, you've got your own private parking, which is nice. The garage yes. isn't shared. Yep. And then an additional parking spot. So two parking spots, which is great. Yep. And a little yard. So what would this ballpark rent for? We're in a good location. Honest 28 to 32. It's kind of um, what I, when I, when I drove so up, I, I yeah, was like, you probably look at properties yeah. all the time and go, to what's me, that that's renting? really interesting because you know, the price point, this is listed at 879. Okay, yeah. So this, you know, 28 to 3,200, yeah. you could go and buy a single family detached house, probably yes. older, yep. probably need a little more upkeep and what have you. That would probably be a million to one, two to one, right. three. And the rent might be the exact same. Rent would be similar. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. And this is a really lock and leave. You don't have to worry about it. You don't right. have a yard necessarily that's going to be a huge maintenance. Like yep. it's just and no rental restrictions. And no rental exactly. restrictions. So you can so you can look at right. it as an investor and say, okay, doll. and and you get something a bit of a newer product too. Well, that's it. As, as a landlord, it. that would appeal to me. Just yeah. you know, to to, to mo any of us, I'm sure mm -hmm. that you don't have to be worried about replacing the roof or the that's hot right. water tank is going to go or. Yep. Yeah, there is, there's something to be said for mm -hmm. that for sure. So I know we're trying to fit a lot in, in a short period no, of time, okay. but I yeah. just want to go back to some of the changes. So the yes. 55 plus, we didn't really talk about that. We talked about the rental right? Yeah, and the age restriction that has now changed. So, right. so maybe we can talk about that a bit. So what we're seeing, just a little bit of the counter. So Strata's got the new rule, rental restrictions are off. Now we got to allow rentals. We can't. So what do we do? Well, we go to a 55 plus. So mm -hmm. we just, I was just saying, I uh, read an article out of Victoria. There's a couple of stratas there that are changing, uh, decided to vote. It's a three quarter vote, same as the strata. They have to, yep. it still has to pass the strata bylaws, but they're making the decision to be a 55 plus. So how that will affect the rental market, which we specifically are talking about, really will honestly dictate, again, I think it goes to location, your, you know, where you mm -hmm. are, what city you're in. I think, you know, in a city like Cologne, you're going to have a much higher, you know, inventory of people looking for 55 plus. Yes. So. I, right. I mean, it will a hundred percent, it's going to affect that, but I don't think we know how that's going to translate yet because we haven't seen, we're just now seeing some stratas vote that in. Right. So how will that affect the rental market? 55 plus tends to be a little bit of a, a snag when you're you know selling a property yeah. uh, or, or renting because you have to be 55 plus. Right. Um, so it does protect the property in a sense. And I guess that's what they're looking from, from maybe families, you know, maybe yes. a, a yeah. certain type of tenant. But again, I, I don't know, I don't really know if we can really, you know, projection wise, I think we have to see what it's going to do before yeah, and sense. see how many of these are in place before you can actually kind of how dictate how it'll Affect relate to the, the market. market. Yeah, exactly. No, it makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a way around it or it's perceived way around it. But I, right. I, I, I'm a little bit cautious with that because I don't know if it really is a way because you still are able to rent it. You're just able to yeah. rent it. So it might protect the building. But so it's I, just changing who that renter is going to be. That's right. Essentially, that's yeah, it. Exactly. So, so, and there's pros and cons. Like as an investment property, I think if you're just investing and you understand what you're getting into, I think you want to be able to range and you want the biggest market For sure. share. Of course. But if it's if you're not in, you know, if you're if you you know, depending on the type of investor you are, and you, mm -hmm. and you don't want to, you know, say headache or you don't want, then you might be very comfortable with a 55 plus and having 55 yeah. plus tenants True. and a quiet little. Rental True. for yourself, and uh, I don't you know. I know some fifty-five-year-olds who are wild. They're That's the right. loudest yeah. partiers. I've <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there you go. Right. It's, it's true. true. It's not a guarantee. Yeah. But That's no, true. Good I, point. Hundred percent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I know some eighty-year-olds who are not a party. Yeah. So. yeah exactly. True. <laughs> 
in some of that in those buildings. So, um, so next question, and yeah. I and this is you know more just your opinion. So yeah, if somebody comes to you, which I'm sure happens, you get people coming to you and saying, "Okay, this is perfect. I'm excited. I'm going to buy an investment property. Yeah. What do I buy? What would your recommendation be to someone? Honestly, I, I single family home. Yeah. I and mm-hmm. that's my personal opinion. So let's you know make sure that yeah. I make that clear. But because uh, some people can do really well for condo, but I just think if you're if you're looking at the marketplace and you have the option in a single family home, there's so many other benefits to it. The the whole, the land will hold its value. Yes. Uh, depending on the size of the property, you might be buying in a zone that you can you know split the property. Right. You can RU yeah. seven it. There has been I've seen that, and I think we've seen a real big push on that in the yeah. marketplace. Single family home, and, and I and there's and the other reasons too is that. I think your turnover is lower. You tend to, Mm -hmm. you can be family based if that's what you're looking for. You don't have to be. I mean, you're going to take the best tenants. But that being said, uh, I think your rental pool, when you go to the market, it's it's a much, and it's a, and and you'll always get right now, the way the inventory is working and that inventory for single family home is not going to change over the next three years. The market right now might be difficult and people might have a harder Mm -hmm. time buying in the market, but there's no way that that amount of inventory to meet that need is going to meet the single family requirements that we're still seeing come into the market. Right. Absolutely. Interesting. So, so I think it's going to hold your value yeah. for sure. And I, and that doesn't mean I'm, I would scare people away from a condo. No, I, no. I wouldn't. Cause I think it's just a different investment opportunity, Right. but single family home. And I do group townhomes in with that because we yeah. just don't see a, a lot of them no. come mm-hmm. to market. They tend to be a little more owner, you know, owner, operated yeah. in a sense where yes. they'll live and then they buy it. It's maybe the between home, whether someone's downsized into a townhome or kind of right. upsized from a condo into a townhome. Right. Um, and that market might change on a real estate side, but I yeah. do group townhomes and single family and, uh, and if it's dollar for a hundred percent. Yeah. No, oh, that that's makes, great. That that's helpful. Sense. So next question, if we can ask, yeah, how do people, cause we get asked this all the time. Cause yeah. we always say to people, you know what, get a property manager. Yep. It's so much easier to have the property maintained. Finding a tenant is so much easier instead of having to go and interview everybody yourself yeah. and screening yeah. and all of that. So what sort of fees do you charge? How does that work? Can I ask that? Y- yeah, no, no okay. problem. I, I, that's everybody, great. Cause no, everybody does ask. Yeah. That. And yeah. they want to know. And I think it, they have to know as well, cause they're projecting what their rental income right. might be and what their cost mm-hmm. is on the property. They've got a mortgage to carry or what that looks like or yeah. strata fees. So generally the contracts are 10%. So 10% of your gross monthly yeah. rent. And there's often a placement fee attached to that, which is often half a month rent. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So that's, that's that, and that's general, that's kind of market. Now yeah. each, each individual property manager or contractor might do something, do something different. different. They, they might they look want. at a property. Yeah. They might have to adjust that depending on, you know, we have volume too. I got some clients with four homes. Well, we're going to look at them different than a Yes. And they're a well, long-term and tenant. You know, I, I, I when people ask us and they go, oh, wow, you know, 10% to have a property manager. And I yeah. go, yeah, seems like a lot of money yes. when the property's mm-hmm. running well and you have no issues. It, and it seems like it's so cheap when yep. you have any sort of problem or you need to, you know, we had a property years ago and <laughs> we didn't, the, the tenants were late on their rent. They kept, this kept happening in the winter yeah. time. We didn't serve them eviction notice because we knew, you sure. know, he, he'd lost his job over the winter and got a job yep. back and- then by year three, it happened again. We served notice to vacate. We went to arbitration and they successfully won yep. because we hadn't served notice to them all the other times. Yep. You know, they owed us 10,000 or something in rent yeah. and their argument and, and they were successful with yep. it was that, well, we didn't ask for the rent, so we mustn't have needed it. And they won and we <laughs> lost. I'm like, boy, if we'd yeah. had a property manager, that, that would not maybe, have happened. Maybe the it, advice is different. Or maybe the, the advice is different. different. So it's... Yeah. It's money that's well, well spent. I agree. And I appreciate that. And, and, and to be fair, you're a hundred percent right. Typically owners, they hear the number and they're like, wow, that is a lot. And I understand you're putting them, you're putting the property management package together and you say, but again, you're more thankful when you're needed. And that's right. our, that's the yes. other, it's like insurance. Yeah. It, it's, it's it, so it true. And especially if you're not here, like we have yep. so many buyers that come and say, I want to get a piece of the Okanagan sure. and they're not here. It's like, well, you can't manage that not being here. You don't want to get the phone calls no. and what are you going to do when you need to stop by the property yep. or what And if it's you. an out of pro- province owner, BC tenancy law is different from Alberta, is yes. different on Ontario. So there's different. And that's a good point. And you know, you, you, you really do need to know uh, uh, the, the, you got to know your the ins and outs. You got to know the rules and yeah. restrictions. And the, as we've seen, just when we were talking about the 55 plus, the rental restrictions or even going back to the fixed term tenancies, yes. that they, they, mm-hmm. things can change and shift quickly. So how do you react to that? And then put 
the property mm-hmm. back to kind of together in order for it to maintain its value or maintain the, the tenancy that's in place. Right. So, now I've got a question yep. and I don't know if it's, if it's, you know, a rumor or if there's, if nope. there's any truth to it, yep. but it's, you know, I know we're, you're not allowed to keep, you know, to publicize a list of bad tenants, that's but correct. I have had people say, <laughs> you want to use a property manager? Cause they all know who the bad tenants are. And yep. do you have a list? Like, we even don't. mentally? No, okay. we're not, we're not, we're not, no, you're right. We're not. Tamara wants the list. <laughs> I'm like, come on, give me the list. Yeah, I would. We don't have any rentals It would be anymore. great if there was a list. I have actually, yeah, and that's a bit of a personal soapbox for me, is I, I do think there needs to be more mm. done mm-hmm. from the tenancies from the province, or, you know, we're in the province of BC, yeah. that allow a little bit more teeth back to the landlord. You know, these things sway, yeah. and I think yes. the pendulum has swung so much towards the tenants mm-hmm. right now. Yes. And I, you know, I've always, I think I've always classed it, so I'll class it how I class it with my, if you were calling and saying, hey, you know, yeah. we're interested in hiring a property manager. Uh, you own the property. You own the rights to the property. The tenant owns the rights to the tenancy. So that's how you set up ah, the best mm. relationship. And I if like you understand that. those two kind of concepts going in, then you know that the owner, your job, our job is to work directly for the owner and right, right. honor their property. And our fiduciary duty is to them, not the tenants, but at the same time, working with tenants, having a good relationship yeah. with the tenants, if you can, and I mean, not if it's, it's a personality, yeah. but yeah. you work with the tenants as best you can, because that will most likely give you the best outcome for the right. property. Well, and you want to keep the tenants happy and be um, reasonable yes. and give them a safe, quiet yep. place to live. And, and they'll take better care of your property. They'll stay longer. They become invested, sure. which is why it's important for yeah. them to know that they own the tenancy. There are restrictions like and requirements that. on them yes. too. So they have to keep care of the property. It's, you know, they can't let it run wild. They, they have to report, you know, maintenance issues that come up. If they're yeah. not reporting those, they yes. can be liable to that. So it's understanding right. those, right. you know, minutiae, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, understanding what an owner needs to know what their requirements are. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's the happy balance because not every like, not every owner wants to have that phone call at uh, no. 7 a.m. that no. the, uh, we got we to gotta fix a kicked yes. in door or, you know. Yes. Yeah, the window's broken the window's or the hot broken, water tank's the gone. Water, the, or, yeah. yeah, and I mean, it's not always bad, but you're right. A hot water tank, you, you know, have a plan. Uh, Absolutely. You know, furnace, have yeah. a plan. Those are, you have to provide heat and water as part of your agreement. Period. That's right. So you have to be able to act on that. So Right. Makes wow. sense. Well, thank you. That yeah, was that amazing. That was really eye-opening and really interesting. It was. I think we could talk forever. So I'm yeah. like, I'm like, okay, not being trying to be cognizant no, no of time and your time, yeah. but thank you so much for coming and, yeah, and no joining worries. and sharing with us. Yeah. Anything else that you wanted to quickly mention or have we kind of covered everything? I think, no, I think we've covered it. I yeah. just think that, the, uh-huh. you know, I think the biggest thing, and you guys will deal with your clients and when we deal with our clients, when we see them is that Kelowna is still a robust market that I think that mm-hmm. there is, I think if you're investing in the Kelowna market, you're going to do you, you have the opportunity to do well yes. and just understand what you're looking for. And it's okay to take those moments, take the step back and understand what investment property you want and then go in. It can wow. be That profitable. was fascinating. Yeah. I think for, for our listeners and, and viewers who, who are debating on jumping into the market and are, are elsewhere, that, yeah. was, that was really, really helpful. Okay. How do people find you? Uh, I'm sorry, well, you were going to no, say no, that. No, no, that's good. <laughs> If they, if they want to find us, we're Associated Property Management. You can find us uh, through the web mm-hmm. and uh, each of us have our own profiles and they can reach out to us via email or call the office and we'll be happy to help them. We've got a full uh, full stable of property managers ready to go. That's Excellent. amazing. So and we'll is, link as well. We'll and, link right great. to you. So no, James awesome. Rayburn and uh, yeah, so Associated Property Management. Thank you again so much. Yeah, no yeah that was Thank great. You. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Estate for Real People. If you want to reach out to the Stone Sisters, visit www.stonesisters.com. This podcast was produced by Podigy Podcasts. See you next time.